Hello, StarCraft fans! This is Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. And today we've got a game between Epic and Grip here on Blackpink, the Ladder Edition. In the top right hand corner of the map, we've got the Red Terran player. It is Epic from Psystorm Gaming. And in the bottom left hand corner, it's going to be the Blue Zerg player, Grip. So this is a very high Masters level game. Sent to me at falconpaladin at gmail.com. Actually, no. No, this was sent to me over Reddit. If you want to message me on Reddit, you could do so. I'm just Falcon Paladin over there. Pretty darn easy to find. As it turns out, I'm fairly active on the StarCraft subreddit. All things Zerg, all things Terran, all things Protoss subreddits as well. But those are a little bit more dead. A little bit quieter than the regular StarCraft subreddit. I think most people just kind of hang out there. But anyway, I'm Falcon Paladin. Anywhere you are on Reddit. You want to send me a replay? Send me a link to a replay? You can do that. Although email is always preferred. I'm just more often checking my email at the Gmail address than I am on Reddit checking those messages. Just the reality of the thing. So it looks like a Reaper expand here from Epic. That barracks about 50% complete. The gas just now getting done. Refinery complete. SCV's working. Timing's going to be very crisp here at this high master's level. I was told this is going to be a great game. And usually if players take the time to send me a great game, it's going to be a great game. Right? They're proud of it. They're proud of it in some way. There are some people that I know that play StarCraft a lot, and I say, hey, send me a replay. And they say, I don't have anything I'm necessarily uh, proud of that I have feeling positive feelings towards. And it makes me feel sad that that's the case. But then when I get something from one of those players, I feel great. I know it's going to be an amazing replay. So it is a Reaper from Epic. Name's going to be Dustin Browder. Uh, the, the unit that kills Dustin will be nerfed beyond useless in the next patch just because he can. All right. Dustin Browder, been around since the beginning of the StarCrafts Blizzard employee. Let's see how he does. In a Reaper suit, man, it's a tough, tough sledding these days. That is a Rotorn that is almost done for grip. This is all the world looking like a two-base Roach Ravager bus type thing here. And there's going to be Roaches out, there's going to be Queens out. Dustin Browder has absolutely no chance. But as the namer said, whoever kills this thing, whatever kills this Reaper, that unit's going to be nerfed into oblivion in the next balance patch. So... If it's a roach, I expect to see major roach nerfs coming up. Although roaches really haven't been significantly changed since they went from one supply to two supply back in the beta of Wings of Liberty. You know roaches used to be one supply? They did. And then Idra said, holy smokes, these are good units for one supply and we'll just mass roach and win all the time. And that basically forced Blizzard to say, um, two, two supply. Two supply is going to be good, I think. Look at this move by Epic. He is actually going to finish this thing by sneaking the SCV through. Did you see that? Okay, hold on. I was talking. I was talking over the brilliance that was Epic's move there. I've never seen this before. So SCV building command center. Lings come in. Just two. The Marine trying to save the day. Does kill one of the Lings. Oh, very nice micro there too. But a single Ling is out and that's enough to take down this SCV. So the SCV is here. It's getting wailed on. Cancels construction. Then goes to the other side, continues making, cancels again, comes to the other side, continues making. He actually shifting through the command center as it's being built, does manage to get it down, and then leads the Ling away. Oh, but ends up dead anyway, and so far nothing has killed Dustin Browder, and he does have a Ling kill. But again, that forced the Lings all the way back, or the Reaper all the way back, rather, and that that was amazing. Why don't we see that more often? Was that, was that just luck? No, he was clicking. You saw him clicking from side to side here. The SCV pathing through the building to do a little bit of constructing on the left side, a little bit on the right side, but the roaches are here. Honeymoon's over for these units. Mule goes down. Oh, almost a full energy mule goes down here. Roaches ready to rock. Dustin Browder trying to get this scout off in here. See what's going on. Double evolution chamber here. Queen ready to rock here at the same time. Oh, Queens could get nerfed, actually. Oh, is he dead, though? Oh, second Queen could turn around. Oh, first Queen gets him. First queen gets him. Roaches here at the front. Trying to knock down this wall. But there's only three of them. And these are going to be double cyclone. Which means the roaches have to get uh, the heck on out. Because cyclones are anti-roach for sure. Marauder here coming in too. The response from Epic is fairly good. I'm going to say there's the cyclone. And look at this thing go. Bam. One roach down. Ready. Set. Two roaches down. Another cyclone pops out. Marauder here too. Nobody dies. Both cyclones still live now. All three roaches are gone. Response from Epic was just perfect. It was a perfect response there. It looked like he was opening. Maybe he's going to try to open Hellions like he is now, but recognizing the early roaches were a bit of a problem. Made some Cyclones and everything worked out. Everything was okay. Who says that Zerg is the only race that is super malleable like that? Super versatile, right? 
That was a situation where Terran was going to open Hellion and said, Oh, I need this, and was able to do it. No big deal. New biggie. Viking coming out for Epic just to find these scouting overlords that Grip does have all the way across the map here. Double evolution, or double extractor, rather, coming up with a natural base. First base for a grip still has the one extractor, just the one gas coming up. Doesn't seem to need a whole lot of gas. Not a two base muta. Anyway, though, he's going lair, and he doesn't have a third base yet. It might very well be a transition into two base muta after that roach push. That's interesting. That is really interesting to me. And I kind of feel like this group from Epic is nice. Got two cyclones, four hellions, a marauder, a viking. He could do some damage here. There are five roaches and a queen at this natural base. Obviously, you're going to have some lings popping out, maybe some additional roaches by the time the army got here. So perhaps Epic recognizes, no, I'm preparing for an attack because I don't see a third base. He did scout it. He did scout the lack of a third base here by the Zerg player. So he knows two base attack incoming. Got to be ready for that. Can't really push across the map right now. And Viking getting stabbed at by this queen on the low ground. So what are you doing back home? Well, using the new lock-on ability, that quick burst damage at the early, where it is, the early stage is 160 damage over 14 seconds. First four shots fire very quickly. So it's very front-loaded, allowing Cyclones to get stuff in their base as a defensive unit and kill it a little bit faster. Warp Prisms, uh, Drop Lords, Oracles, things like that. Just a little bit better in the anti-air. Still doing about the same damage, just front-loading it so they hit faster on the early stages before the flying units can get out of their range. Cyclones aren't that fast. 413 move speed. Not that zippy compared to things like the Oracles. And, and like Vikings and Medivacs and things like that for TBT. Yo, Queen takes down the Viking. Viking had some kills, though. A couple Overlords had gone down. I think one of those was the Viking. The other one is up here that we just saw. Would make sense. Another Overlord here. Scouting this out. Sees this push. Do we have Hellbat ability? Structures say no armory from Epic. This can't be a Hellbat Cyclone push, but it's still going to be pretty good nevertheless. The Lings, if there were any Lings, would be in trouble. Uh, but no, it's just Roach, man. 16 Roaches with two more on the way here. I don't know about this. Maybe the Hellions taking a little bit of damage in the front, but the Queens are here. One with the energy to transfuse. Just used it. And enough, just enough Roaches. The composition from Epic is good, but Grip's macro is just better. In this situation, the Roach of the Queen is able to hang on, spreading some creep out this way too. Just trying to make sure that Epic's not going to come back in for round two. Working, does he have any Ravagers at all? No, but he's getting plus two, plus two. Yep, for his Roaches, he already has plus one, plus one. At this stage of the game, that's pretty good. And making a Ravager, just proved me wrong. Basically taking this severely injured Roach and making it into a Ravager. See how hurt it is, but watch, when it pops, full energy. So that's something. If you're just going to make a couple Ravagers out of your Roach Ravager army, find the ones that are injured. Make those into Ravagers, and then they get full health. It's very nice. It's very handy. Hellion running away from the Zerg army basically can do that because they're fast. Hellion's running into the third base here, splitting the drones fairly well. Oh, but pinning them on in. Oh, the drones forced to fight for their lives. Never good. Never a good thing. That is a bunch of dead drones. Four? Only four? That's probably fair. That's probably fair. Four dead drones when four Hellions rolled into that natural base, and there's only a queen to defend. That's actually super impressive. All right, what is this? This spinning logo, I saw it earlier. It looks Zergy. I mean, it makes sense, right? We're playing Zerg here. I, I don't know. I don't know what it is. I'm going to move on. Is that a hive? That is an eight minute hive from Grip. Working on muscular augments for his Hydra. He's got his third base down. I think I mentioned that earlier. Third base here from Epic has landed. It is an orbital command, not a planetary fortress. Getting tanks, getting plus one vehicle weapons is epic recognizing with that roach count tanks are going to be very good tanks doing that bonus damage versus roaches and then going cyclone drop and hellbat drop the other way so the armory looks like there's already one armory yeah making a second armory here so it looks like epic is going for mech now we've seen zerg players struggle mightily against mech on the channel recently all the way from midrick madness level up to the pro level so we'll see if this Masters level game is any different from what we've seen so far. I don't know. I have not cast this game. Didn't even look it over. Just popped it in the StarCraft machine and loaded it up for you guys. So Hellbat drop here at the natural base. Going to try to take down this Queen and actually will be able to with the healing from this Medivac. Queen down. Roach is showing up. Drone's trying to come back in. Actually taking some good... Roasting up a little bit there. Any more die? Maybe one more drone ended up killed there, but not a big deal. Grip working on his fourth base up north. From his natural, spreading creep quite nicely. Another Hellion dies at scouting that fourth base location and creating a fourth base of his own now is epic here in the north section of the map. So, goodness, Grip's working on plus three, plus three. 
for his ranged units. These roaches and these hydras. Good gravy. That is some of the best timing I've seen from a Zerg player in a long time. Plus three, plus three starting before 10 minutes is actually really super good. Super great. All right, so here comes Epic with his mech army. He's got cyclones. He's got tanks now. There are definitely tanks. Uh, 10. Oh, he's got 10 tanks right now? Wow. About seven of them with this army. And, I mean, coming from the backside, Roach's Hydra is going for it. The siege, the siege tanks are not sieged. Now they are, though. Is it enough is the question. You almost got to walk right on up here because you are taking incredible amounts of tank fire. And, yes, does have enough to clean that thing up. Does grip. Losing a bunch of units in the process, but clearing out a Terran army is always worth it, I think. 5,000 resources lost for Epic and 3,400 so far for grip. Fourth base being constructed by Epic down south, so that means this is not the fourth base. This is a planetary fortress, maybe? Not. He wants to expand. Meanwhile, Hellions rolling on into that fourth base location. They got blue flame now. These drones, nothing saving them today. There are not enough to fight for their own lives. Everyone is dead. The Queen futilely stabbing at them as they try to run away. Roach is walking right on in to this third base location, getting on top of the tanks. Doing pretty well for themselves here. SCV is forced to fight at the same time. Hellbats and SCVs versus these roaches is just not going to be enough. They've got plus two, plus two. Ladies and gentlemen, this third base by Epic is in a ton of trouble right now. Going to lose that supply depot. Going to lose that missile turret, forcing a liftoff on that orbital command. The anti-air is pretty good with all these hiders now showing up with that plus two, plus two. This orbital command, I think, is going to die. If it doesn't die now, it's burning, and it's going to go into the dead space and die. Unless you can swing over to that natural and get repaired. Keep an eye on that one. So, oh, Epic is in a ton of trouble right now. He is somehow getting a fifth base uh, under all of this, just outside of his main, upgrading that one to a planetary fortress. Man, that plus two, plus two timing. Roach Ravager stuff at 10 minutes was just insane. Out of grip. Fantastic, wonderful timing. I mean, has lost uh, 14 drones now, but 34 SCBs have gone down. It's 71 to 37 total harvesters. Grip is in a commanding lead against the Terran player right now. Viper's in production for Grip. Working on plus two attack for his ground mech units is epic here, and this base is in a lot of trouble. Tanks are in siege mode, though. Planetary Fortress and six tanks with plus one attack. I don't know that Grip wants to come in here. I am unconvinced that he wants to come in here. Taking some fire. Yeah, he's out. He is out. He says, you know what? That's a really untenable position. Blue Flame Hellions are rolling on into this third base now. Are they going to be able to get much? couple more drones go down. 15 drones have been killed, so maybe one. But others are weakened as well. Viper sucking energy off this hatchery, which seems a little bit risky. This is kind of a forward-facing hatch, and it's going to be one that will be attacked at some point. Epic has expanded. I mean, he's got his fourth, which I don't know that Griff knows exists. He does not know this exists. That's a problem. So he thinks he has the Terran player contained on three bases, but really it's four. And he's on four bases himself, so he is not on the advantageous footing that he thinks he is. So fully upgraded Hydras, fully upgraded Roaches, some Vipers with Blinding Cloud. Let's see how this one works out. There's the Blinding Cloud on those tanks. Roaches, Hydras walking on in. Blinding Cloud on the Planetary Fortress as well. The repair happening on the Planetary Fortress. Kind of trying to stutter step, move his way on in here. Too many tanks from the back side, though. Oh, epic. Obliterating that army. Just fantastic. Reinforcements at just the right time. This back line of tanks making up for the guys. They got Blinding Clouded in the front. Planetary Fortress has a kill. Is not dead. Excellent hold there by Epic. That was fantastically impressive. Grips working on Ultras. Just now starting his plus one melee attack. Is getting kindness plating. Hellions continuing to roll out. Murder some more stuff. There's a spine crawler now at this third base location. Which makes it a little bit harder for these Hellions to do their thing. Yeah, getting stabbed. Also, there's a small contingent of Roach Hydra here that's going to make sure they die very quickly. Uh, one drone. Another drone went down. 16. 16 for now. But guess who's here at the fourth base? Yeah, tanks. Vikings, more and more tanks. Blinding Cloud again on the tanks, though. But the ones on the back lines are the ones you got to worry about here. Yes, you're going to lose the ones in the front, but enough in the back. Perhaps the stutter stepping forward. Whoa, grip. Impressive micro there. This tank does end up going down. An Ultra shows up at the Hellions. No, we can't really handle this and decide to move on out. So fully upgraded Ultra Lisks. Well, at least the armor. And working on Kitness Plating, not quite there yet either. Getting Ling Speed, which he skipped. I mean, he made a couple slow Lings at the early stages of the game to harass his natural. He hasn't made any Lings since, strangely enough. Resources lost could be 17,000 for Epic and 14,000 
for Grip. Another base down south. Grip, man. Or Epic, rather. Epic, you're doing so well. APM for these players. Over 300 each. Super crazy. Hellion's still trying to get into this third base and do some shenanigans, but they keep killing maybe one drone. Perhaps one drone at a time. It's just not really worth it. You have to do more damage than that. Grip is double expanding for a fifth and a sixth base up the north and one down south here towards the central section of the map. Grip wants revenge. He wants to take down this fifth base, this planetary fortress, with his ultras. Ultra Ling this time, strangely enough. Just walking right on in. Don't mind us. No blinding cloud this time. Ultras on the planetary fortress. The repair's pretty good though. And the tanks are going or the tanks are going down. The ultras are going down to the tank fire though. Hellions fighting every little DPS counts. And look at that planetary fortress. <laughs> 12 kills. And the ultras couldn't take it down. The repair was too good. Repair was too good. Plus no attack upgrades on the ultras. I guess they have plus one now. Wow. Epic. Just holding that impressively for sure. 52 to 62 harvesters. Grip does have a bit of a lead, but the Terran player, I mean, the closer he gets to max, the better. He's working on it. He's actually getting smart servos. That's the upgrade that allows you to transform your transformable units very quickly. Almost uh, hilariously slow. Or so, rather. Hilariously so, not slow. That would not make any sense at all. But yeah, it, I mean, you just kind of have to laugh when you see it. So once it's done, we'll see if he transforms anything into a Hellbat or lifts or lands a Viking or makes a Siege Tank go into Siege Mode. That is what that does, right? Does that do Siege Tanks? I don't know. Blue Flame Hellions up at this fifth base up north. Getting chased away by Ultras, that's really bad for them. First Liberator of the day from Epic. And trying to set up at the 6th base, there are a million Hydras here though, and gets one Hydra, but otherwise is killed very quickly, as it turns out. Ultras chasing Hellions that are kiting them with Blue Flame, which is kind of hilarious. I mean, it would take what I feel like about 10 game minutes to actually kill an Ultra with Blue Flame Hellions in a kiting situation like that, so perhaps you shouldn't try. Morelings. In production, working on plus two melee, getting centrifugal hooks. Might want some banelings in this composition from Grip as well. Army looking really intimidating from Epic here. Overlord goes down, but does scout the location of the army, which is important, important information to know. 24 banelings in production for Grip. It's coming down to meet the challenge in the southern section of the map here. Tanks are able to get into siege mode. That was not very fast. Oh, hold on, though. Hold on, though. Those Hellions... These Hellions transform. Okay, we gotta watch this. Gotta watch this. Nope. Ready, set. There it is. Jeez, that is zippy. That is just zippy. Hellions up here at the fifth base trying to do stuff. Actually, Hellbats up at the fifth base trying to do stuff. And they're gonna take down the Spine Crawler, which leaves these drones utterly defenseless. Not even a queen to assist here. Vipers ready to go, ready to blinding cloud these tanks, but Vi oh, Viking Cloud as well trying to make those vipers disappear blinding cloud doing fantastic ultras at the front taking a lot of damage but that blinding cloud spread is uh, disgusting from grip it does wear off eventually as you can see these tanks are now no longer green but banelings rolling in to finish off the tanks not necessarily how you want to do it but it'll work and the hydras can finish off the liberators too so both players taking major major smashes to the face in that engagement but grip's still alive and he's up 123 to 104 total supply that's the thing. Epic wanted to kill the Zerg player, and Grip was on the defense, and he defended. It's all it takes. It's all it takes to win sometimes. 34 drones lost for Grip compared to 46 for Epic. Both players, I don't know, 60 SCVs to 72 uh, drones. I would say that Grip's feeling a little bit more confident here. Oh, he finally discovers the fourth base. Does Grip. Trying to take it down. Some takes responding, murdering that off. Hellbat's trying to wander on into the fifth base up north. Queen's. So many queens here somehow. Where did you guys come from? Six queens to defend. Four more ultras in production for Grip this game. Jeez, this game is all over the place. These are good players. These are some real, real good players. Hope you're enjoying this as much as I am enjoying casting it. Epic forced to lift off his fourth base again. Sixth base down in the bottom right. Does Your forces are under attack. He does know about it. Grip knows about it, but he's not going to bother with it for some reason. Single ultras versus a tank and a bunch of Hellions, which... Not working out for the Terran player there, but Liberator attacks do a ton of damage versus Ultras, and it finally does go down in a fiery, burning flame. Another Ultra shows up to avenge his fallen brother. I assume Ultras are dudes, which may not be true. 22 Roaches in production for Grip, transitioning into Roaches. 
I guess. I mean, Grip's making Liberator Tank. I'm not sure that's the... Or Epic's making Liberator Tank. Why do I keep calling him Grip? Epic and Grip is just maybe too close for my brain to handle. Epic is making tanks and Liberators. And Roaches are super bad about that. Unless he's upgrading them to Ravagers, which, okay. That seems fairly reasonable. I can roll with that. Coming on in. Third, third time the charm, I guess. Ultra Roach up here at this fifth base location with the Planetary Fortress. SCV repair, trying to do what it can. Ultra's at plus to attack now. And it does end up going down. No tanks to help this time. Well, a couple tanks to help this time. Liberator going to get rocked as well. Blue Flame Hellion versus these Roaches. Just walking right on top of these dudes are the Roaches. Goodbye, tanks. Goodbye, Supply Depot. Actually, relanding his fourth base is epic. That is just fantastic. We're trying to march up this ramp at the same time as Grip against Epic's natural base. Liberator is having a great day. Five kills. A lot of dead stuff. Are there tank? Where's their tank fire? I don't think there's any tank fire. But yeah, like I said, can't do anything about this Liberator, but I don't think that Grip actually cares about that. 132 to 83. Total supply. Liberator burned down those roaches from above. Another Liberator setting up shop at the sixth base, effectively cutting off four of the eight mineral patches until a spore crawler comes over to deal with it. That quick burrow time helping Zerg immensely. Bam, 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 bam. Looks like the Liberator does not want to move. Worried about this fourth base down here. Yep, it's Toast. Small group of Roach and Ravager. Nope, Roach Hydra, rather. Taking it down, and here goes this Planetary Fortress. Is there enough from Grip to take that? I don't know if it is. Look at the streaming from across the map here. These are Lings. Nothing else is this fast. Lings rolling on in from the backside. Tanks going down. Lings do have the plus to attack. And it is just swarming right now for Grip. Tearing through. Tearing through these dudes. Bringing the Lings to the back as the Blue Flame Hellions are defending now. And they are here for the Lings and pretty much for the Lings only. Well, drones. I guess otherwise. The army is now 45 Lings, 7 Hydras, 4 Roaches. It was not really heavy on anything but Vipers and Lings, honestly. You have the right numbers for. And going for this base down at the south for Epic. The repair is up. The Vipers not really doing much here, but that's it. Epic taps out, recognizing he does not have enough. Loses that base. He's down to two bases. He was down 147 to 60. Total supply just about. And Grip leaves the game as a winner. Whoa. That was intense. That was an intense 21-minute game at the high master level. Again, APM consistently over 300 for these players. 330 for Epic and 342 for Grip. Resources lost going to be uh, 40,000. 40,300 for Epic compared to 37,000 for Grip. Definitely very close. I mean, 17 Ultras will do that for the Zerg player. Lose 17 Ultras, 69 Hydras, and 85 Roaches with 9 Vipers dead, too. Problematic for sure. But Epic lost 54 tanks. 54 Siege tanks. 9 Liberators. 43 Hellbats. 54 Hellions. Always, those guys are always the big losers in these mech battles. A lot of them die. But 2 Planetary Fortresses and 2 Orbital Commands. A little bit too much to overcome today. And 102 SCVs dead. Crikey. Yeah, I, I mean, what we've seen in the past here is you kind of need a bigger Viking group to snipe down those Vipers. If your Viking group is closer to 8 or 10, you can essentially one-shot the Vipers from distance, killing them before they can get close enough to do that blinding cloud thing. If you can remove the blinding cloud from the picture, then suddenly your tanks are a lot better against this ground army that Grip is going for. But in the end, too good the blinding clouds, too many Vipers available, not enough tanks, uh, uh, not enough, rather... Vikings, yeah, only six. Six Vikings were made in this game, period. And they all died. So I think a couple more. Eight to ten. Going to help you out immensely there. All right. So that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another daily Legacy of the Void upload. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, and Patreon. All at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.